Hello Bass family and welcome to Everything Bass. Today we're working on the Technique Development series. We're going to Unit 9. Um, we want to, my goal is to always give you so many different technical exercises that you can use as warm-ups. Um, you can use to try to develop your uh, the agility, your flexibility and things like that. But not always the same thing so that you don't get cut into, cut into a muscle memory. Um, we, a lot of times we think of muscle memory with our left hand where we play like a, a certain pattern that's so comfortable that when we go to improvise our hand is drawn to that because it's familiar. And that's true. But today I'm giving you a familiar pattern, something that your, your fretting hand has done before. But we can also get a muscle memory with our right hand. We, or sorry, I'm always worried about confusing our lefty brothers and sisters. So with the plucking hand, we can also get muscle memory. We can get a rhythm uh, or a certain pattern that we like to play. And by repeating that over and over again, we just ingrain it so that when we try to step out of that and play something else, it can be a challenge. So for this one, it's the familiar pattern where you play uh, on your lowest string, you go uh, one, two, three, four. Then you play one, two, but move three, four to the next string. One, two, three, four goes to the next string. One, two, three, four goes to the next string. The reason I'm saying neck string and lowest string is you can apply these exercises to five string bass, six string bass, seven string bass, it doesn't matter. You just play it all the way across. So you do this pattern of playing one, two, three, four, keep the one, two on the lowest string on your bass and move the three, four across. Now, likewise, when you're coming down, you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you see how that goes? That has been featured in another, um, uh, a, a technique development uh, unit. But with the right hand, we're going to really work on the difference between eighth notes and sixteenth notes. So on the first half of each measure, we're going to play eighth notes. And the second half of each measure, we're going to play sixteenth notes. Now if that confuses you, think of this. You're always going to play the first two notes uh, on your bass as eighth notes. You're going to go one and two and. Those are eighth notes. If you think about how you, when you tap your foot to music, that's one and two and. So you're going one and two and. Now, for the next two notes, we're gonna play 16th notes, and there'll be eight 16th notes, because now we're going three E and then four E and then. So that will sound like this. Now on the next pass, the next uh, measure we do, we start with the same two notes beginning and play an eighth notes, and move the 16th notes to the next string. Now that exercise, uh, I think, is a very simple way of adding a, a variant to the rhythm of your right of your plucking hand, that hopefully will bleed over and, and give you some more varieties. Now think about this: I'm providing you one variation. Don't hesitate to take the same fretting pattern, but rhythmically do stuff different with the right hand. Maybe do all triplets: one into two into three into four into one into two into three into four into. Uh, do a combination of sixteen notes and triplets, which can get tricky. By, by changing that up systematically and intentionally, what I'm saying intentionally is don't just improvise the exercise and do whatever you want with your right hand because slowly your hand might go back into the muscle memory and you'll just end up playing um, what you always play. Be intentional. Decide uh, ahead of time like, oh, you know what, today I'm going to do uh, quarter notes and eighth notes. Next day I'll do quarter notes and sixteenth notes, bigger kind of variant between the subdivisions. Um, by doing that, uh, you can take this simple one video lesson and get uh, gee, almost an endless cap uh, possibilities of, of rhythmic variations for your plucking hand. So I hope you guys at least get the concept. I mean, the exercise is valuable, but the concept is really what I want to get across. Don't just focus on you know, your left or your fretting hand becoming like really varied and having no muscle memory that, that tra tricks it into playing the same thing over and over again. Think of that also as your plucking hand. And when you do that, automatically you become a more versatile player and your creative options become 10, 100 fold. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, now, as I've said with all these, when you play up and back, you have the option of just doing that up and back a couple times. And then maybe if you're working with a metronome at this point, you've already memorized it and you got it down and you decided to put a metronome to it, then maybe speed up 10 beats and go up and down, up and down. 
I would also encourage you to play the exercise up and then back down on the, your fingerboard, move up a fret, up, back down, move up a fret. Because you'll notice the difference between here and here. Your arm's in a different position, it feels different, the frets are closer together. So you might have to adjust uh, your tech, well you will have to adjust your technique to be, uh, to play cleanly and with good tone. Now, some guys will play here and here and then jump up here and they won't do the incremental steps. And that's a little bit of a big jump. So sometimes it's a little harder for us to find what adjustments need to be made. And we're wondering why all of a sudden we're getting a lot of buzzes out of our fret, uh, our fingerboard. So I like to go up one fret at a time. If I don't have the time, I'll play this position. So I'm playing, covering frets one through four. And then I'll shift up and play frets five through seven, or five through uh, eight, sorry. And then go up and go nine the rest of the way. That at least puts it into three zones, and it's a little, little uh, bigger increment than one fret at a time, but it'll save you some time if uh, time is of the essence, and a lot of times it is. Um, so that's Technique Development Unit 9. Try it out. Check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think. Did you try some other patterns? If you did, share them with us. That's the whole point, that we become a collective consciousness, if you will. Not to sound all Star Trek-y. But, um, but that we, we uh, like maybe you come up with a really cool idea rhythmically for the plucking hand. You know, put it in the comments. Tell us what you did on beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. You don't have to write it out. Just say, hey, on beat one, I did this kind of note. Beat two, I did this kind of note. And then I'll give it a shot and I'll, I'll practice it and let you know what I thought. Um, I'm sure it'll be awesome because it can't, it can't help but be awesome. Um, all right, now let's move on to uh, our encore item. One of the guys, as I um, started working my way up through like uh, base journalism where I was writing as a freelance writer for a couple magazines and I became the editor of Base Frontiers magazine and I started interviewing people and reading articles, I started re um, hearing about the bassist from Dream, Dream Theater, John Myung, and how dedicated he was to practicing. And uh, it was always in reverence. It was like other players I would be interviewing saying, oh man, John Myung, he practices all the time. Like backstage, he's practicing. He comes off after a show, uh, gets on the bus, he's practicing. You know, that he's just in the hotel room constantly practicing. And that inspired me. Because technically, he's, he's an amazing player. Well, in every way, he's an amazing player. But his technique is flawless. So um, I started listening to him. And... Uh, you know what I love about Dream Theater, and I know people have different feelings about uh, Dream Theater and stuff, but you can't deny is that everyone in that band really have committed to mastering their instruments. Um, Jordan uh, Rudess is absolutely one of my favorite musicians on the planet. You know, just again, what he can do on the piano and how he can actually imitate, you know, perfectly note for note guitar solos of some of our, the most amazing players in the world. Uh, but then he goes and plays perfect ragtime piano, and then he plays amazing jazz uh, with beautiful passing chords, and everything's fluid and flawless. Uh, of course, you know the the two drummers they've had have been both awesome. Um, I, you know, I could go through and just tell you, but every everyone in that band, I think, have just really put in the time and sacrificed to just be masters of their instruments, and it shows. So I uh, then it became tough to what album do I want to put as the encore item. Because there's so many of my favorites. But I chose Octavarium. Octavarium, even though it's a more recent album, if you look at their whole discography, um, it, it just, wow, it just has so much depth to it. Um, you know, if you want to hear some of uh, John Mayung's technical ability and at, at tempo, is listen to Panic Attack. Panic Attack has that bass intro that's just so cool. And it's funny to be like, walking through like the NAMM show or be visiting a music store and hearing a player play that as an intro is, is pretty cool, uh, which just shows the influence of Dream Theater to young players. Um, but I also, there's um, Root of All Evil. I love the slow build on that tune and, uh, and the power of the song. I mean, a lot of times we think of um, people with this much, you know, technical prowess, they're just masters of the instrument. A lot of times they go for these very uh, articulate, very uh, delicate compositions to show, you know, to maybe showcase uh, all the histrionics they can do. However, Root of All Evil is just powerful. And, and, and I think they really tie into emotion, which sometimes is lacking from Shred. The, the Shred style music, which again, I would never say that Dream Theater is a Shred man. But when you can take that kind of technical ability, but then put it to a relatable passion or emotion, I think it's powerful. 
And, um, and I think Dream Theater nailed it on this album. Um, two of my favorite cuts, The Answer Lies Within, I Walk Beside You. Both those, the lyrical content is amazing. I think they're inspiring songs. And um, the, yeah, I still, that's a heavy rotation is that album. Uh, when, when I go through and decide to just pull an album, it's probably in my top 20. Um, so let's say for some reason, you've heard people maybe slam Dream Theater, but you never heard them for yourself. Um, you know, before you make a judgment on a band, just by what someone else says, give them a listen, just, you know, without any kind of uh, prejudice or preconceived bias against them. Just listen to them and see what you think. I have fallen prey to that. I've had, I've heard people bash a new band and they go, okay, well then they must be horrible and never really even give them a chance. And then when I do, it's like, wait a minute, this is actually pretty good. And I feel kind of badly because I judged them before I ever really experienced them. Um, so if you want to like just, you, you know, maybe you've been on the fence about checking out Dream Theater, whatever the cause may be, check out Octavarium and really give it a listen to. Uh, I just think it's, it's a great balance between musical mastery and emotional content. I, I really love this album. Uh, and I hope you'll check it out. And if you do, or if you already listened to it and you want to chime in, you know, put it down below. The only thing I ask is we don't bash. We don't bash people here. We don't negatively like say, oh, those guys are jerks or whatever you might say that's negative. Um, I don't want this community to be that way. I want really to uh, cultivate a uh, environment that's optimistic, that's supportive. I'm not saying you have to like everything. Like I'm sure I've recommended albums that you don't like. Uh, it's just you, if you can offer some constructive criticism, that's cool. But if you just want to slam them or be negative, this really isn't the forum for that. Um, all right. Well, very good. Technique Development Unit 9 and Dream Theater's Octavarium. Um, we had a really good time talking to you guys today. I uh, love the, love the, the uh, input you guys are giving me. Uh, thank you for the emails to dtitus at daletitus.com. Really thanks for our Facebook group. Um, I, I feel bad because my Instagram activity has been so slow because the Facebook group has been so active. If you haven't checked it out, go uh, to Facebook and search Everything Bass with Dale Titus. You have to do the whole search because Everything Bass is actually Everything Bass and that takes you to a fishing site, which maybe you like fishing too. Try them both. Um, but if you go there, just hit like and follow and, uh, you know, Internet, you know, introduce yourself. Say, hey, new to the group, I'm from so-and-so or whatever, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. And then just jump in on the conversations. I try to post, well, I do post every day. Sometimes I'm posting questions so we can kind of get a conversation going. Other times I just post hopefully things that inspire you to practice, inspire you to try new things, and maybe support you when, I don't know, maybe you're in a situation where you're not getting that much support. Uh, you can always count on bass players supporting you. We are really are a tight family, and that's been my experience. Um, for the last 30 some odd years that I've played bass. So thank you so much. Uh, once again, I'd like to ask you if you, if you don't mind, um, hit like on the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, and tap the bell notification icon so that every time um, I post a video, you guys will be told that it's up and you can check it out. Um, also, lastly, if um, you really want to take these lessons and get more out of them, if uh, you're having a hard time finding a private instructor and these lessons seem that they might be able to fill that uh, spot for you, and I'd be honored if you did, um, go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash everything base, capital E, capital B. And if you uh, subscribe, currently at the time of taping, the, the monthly subscription is just $8 a month. If you subscribe, then you get access to all the written material for every video that I post. Um, some videos, very few, don't have anything written, but I'd say 99% of them, there's some sheet you can download that'll have um, material that'll support the video. I find this helpful because we can't always practice in front of uh, whatever device you use to uh, watch YouTube. Um, so by being able to print out and put these into a binder, then you can just add it into your normal practice routine. It reminds you what we've talked about. Um, and it's very cool. What I've also done, because now we have so many videos up, it might be a little hard to find the video you're looking for. So um, if you go to Patreon, you become a subscriber, you open up each post, in the post itself has a link to the video. So I'm hoping to make it a little more easy. So not only can you download the PDF for whatever the video is, and whenever there's notation, um, unless it's sight reading, There'll be standard notation if you do site read already and tab. So it's, it's inclusive to anybody. Anyone can get the value. There's also a lot of neck diagrams and visualizations of the pattern that I'm showing you on the base. 
Anyway, I'm blattering on. Love to have you join our Patreon family of supporters. So thank you so much, and I will see you at the next video.